Over the past number of years, statistics have shown that the rate of international adoption has dropped across North America. My next guest endured a 10-year journey before adopting, get this, four siblings all at once. Welcome Jeffrey Moore to 100 Huntley Street. Thank you, Maggie. It's a pleasure to be here. So the journey starts, unfortunately, with uh, a couple of miscarriages that you and your wife experienced. It did. That's right. Um, you know, the first time we had a miscarriage, we were very devastated. Uh, we believed that we were supposed to have children and God had called us to have children. And so we were excited about that, about expanding our family. And then all of a sudden we had this huge unexpected um, miscarriage, you know, mm -hmm. come into the picture. And it was really, really hard yeah. uh, to deal with because it wasn't what we expected. Yeah. It wasn't what we thought was going to happen. I'm always fascinated with people's dialogue with God through those circumstances mm -hmm. because, you know, we have this sometimes misguided idea that as soon as you become, become a Christian, everything's supposed to be great all the time. Yes. And then when bad things happen, you're like, wait a minute here. So what is the dialogue like with God when you go through losing two babies? Definitely a lot of questions. Um, I really had to, to dig into my faith and to understand, you know, more of who God is and that um, we're not guaranteed uh, an easy life. We're not guaranteed that everything is going to go smoothly. Yeah. But what we are guaranteed is that He is with us, mm. that He will hold us in those storms of life. And that was what we found, um, especially in the second miscarriage, because again, after the first one, we had hope that, mm -hmm. you know, well, the next pregnancy will result in um, a healthy baby, but it didn't. And then when we went through the second one, I think it was even harder yeah. because we kind of lost hope. You know, we had that hope deferred in some ways, and we really had to go back and, and, and strengthen our faith mm -hmm. and understand really who God is and that He was with us. He had not left us. He had not uh, forsaken us, yeah. and His promises were still real. And of course, you were blessed with Joshua, your son. Yes. And so you had, you know, you had a son in your life. Um, so one day, a woman talks to your wife, and she has this. She's heard from God, and she thinks you're you're going to have a daughter. Yes, that's Tell right. Tell us about this. That's right. So that was a really interesting. We were Joshua was two years old at that time, and we were thinking about you know having more kids and, and praying about what that would look like, yeah. how to expand our family. Had never considered adoption. Um, we really just at that time thought, I thought, I wasn't sure I could love a child that wasn't mine biologically. I mean, I'm just being honest. Yeah. But God broke into our story. Mm -hmm. And that was the first thing where um, we heard, We're, you're going to have another child. You know, you're going to have maybe this daughter. And we began to pray about that. And then God began to put orphans on our heart. Mm -hmm. And we're like, well, that is really interesting. You know, what's God doing here? And then in May of 2007, I actually had a vision. Yeah. Uh, God gave me this vision. And I like to describe that to say, it wasn't a dream because I was awake, mm. but it was much more vivid than just an imagination or something. So I really felt like there was a spiritual purpose behind it. And in this vision, um, very simply, I was floating in the ocean at night, um, but it was very calm. And I walked up onto this beach of a deserted tropical island and lying on the beach were all of these jewels or gemstones. Mm. And they were glowing with an internal fire. Everyone was a different color. Mm. And they were like the size of golf balls or bigger. And I just wanted to pick them all up. And I reached down in the vision to pick one up and the vision ended and God spoke something to my spirit. He said, my son, are you willing to be carried by my spirit to a land far away to pick up the jewels that no one else even knows about? Wow. And in that moment, he kind of pulled back the curtain of heaven a little bit and showed me that those jewels represented children, that we were to go to another place, another culture, another land and bring them into our family. And so the that journey began, begins. The journey begins. And so you travel to Burkina Faso thinking possibly this child or children could be there. Yes. You actually meet a young girl that you think could possibly be your daughter. That's right. That's tell, right. Tell us about this. And so we went, um, you know, God, I kind of see these words that God gives you like puzzle pieces. Yeah. He gives you these puzzle pieces, but he doesn't always show you what the box lid is going to look like yep. when it's done. And so he gives you these pieces and you put them down on the table and you start to put them together and fit them together. And uh, he gave us a word for, for the adoption and he told us about going to Africa on a family mission trip. And I put those pieces together and said, okay, let's go. And so we told everybody, we told our family, we told our pastor that we were, might come back from this trip with an adopted child. Mm -hmm. I mean, we thought, believed it that, that strongly. But we went on the trip and we volunteered at an orphanage. We actually stayed at an orphanage there in the country, um, worked in the community, did all kinds of different things. It was an amazing trip, but we never connected with the child that we thought was adoptable. The one that we saw there at the orphanage um, was actually not adoptable. She actually still had family um, living in the community. And so she was not able to be adopted. 
Okay, and so then eventually we're moving forward a little bit, but eventually you hear that there's a possibility of four kids That's in right. Peru. That's right. And are you think, what are you thinking when you hear this from the adoption agency that there might be four kids? Four! Four, yes. You were first thinking maybe <laughs> one, but now four. What are you thinking? We were thinking one at the beginning. And then as the process went on, we started to feel like the God was saying, no, it's not just one, it's multiple kids. And so when we worked through the home study process and got approved uh, by the government, we actually got approved for multiple kids, mm -hmm. up to four children. And so we were looking at large sibling groups of maybe three or four. Um, that's one of the things that led us to choose Peru, was Peru keeps their sibling groups together. Um, some countries don't, but yeah. Peru does, and so we wanted to support that. And um, yeah, we, when we first heard it, we thought, okay, that's a lot of kids yeah. uh, all at once, particularly when we'll only have one child to begin with. Right. And then you know, going from one to five, that concept uh, was pretty shocking when we first heard it. So at some point, Jeffrey, do you think... God, are you sure about this? Like, is there, you know, is there a question in your mind? Because I'm just thinking if God said, hey, Maggie, four kids. <laughs> I'd be like, are you really sure about this? <laughs> did that ever go through your mind? It Jeffrey? did, Maggie. It really did. Um, you know, there are lots of times where we had doubts and we wondered, you know, is this really, are we really hearing from God? Is he really telling us to do this? Mm. Is this really what he has for us? Is this the big life story, you know, for us? Uh, are we capable of doing this? Yeah. Are we qualified? And really that's the reason I think it took 10 years uh, in the process of God getting us ready because there were just things in our own hearts that we had to get right with God mm. and get figured out with him um, so that we could be living in, as sons and a son and daughter, you know, to him. Uh, and then we could transform those children, these orphans coming into our family, into sons and daughters. And so as you, both you and Christine, tried to grapple through this, made the decision, she just basically said, you, you pray about it, whatever decision you make, we'll go with it. And eventually through prayer, decide, yes, we're gonna go to Peru, we are going to adopt these kids. Tell me about the first time you met yes. these. The first time we met yeah. them oh, was an amazing, amazing experience. You know, every adoption story is different and everybody has different experiences. Mm -hmm. um, our kids had lived in a family, uh, were born into a family, mm -hmm. but then had lived in an orphanage for like three years mm -hmm. um, prior to the adoption. And they were so ready to be adopted. Mm -hmm. um, you know, our agency had cautioned us when we first met them and said, look, they might be standoffish, they might not even come to you or look at you, who knows what's gonna happen. I mean, they're about to experience a major change in their life, but that was not our experience. Mm -hmm. When we walked into the orphanage and we were waiting for them in the little room with the director and they started coming in one by one, they actually ran to us. Mm -hmm. And uh, my oldest daughter um, in Spanish, she said, te amo papi, oh. which is the, the it's, it's the close familiar, I love you daddy. I mean, she was already calling me daddy on day one, and that was just a confirmation that we were in the right place, um, that we had heard from God clearly, yeah. and that he was really orchestrating this whole thing. And there, it wasn't easy, there was quite a journey yes. to get them back home, but yes. Jeffrey, what have you learned about God hmm. throughout this process? You know, the biggest thing is God's faithfulness. Yeah, It really is, that he is faithful, and when he says something, he will do it. Mm -hmm. When he has said something, it will happen. Um, and we have all these things. We have like over the 10 years, like 15 pages of things that we experienced with God um, that he told us about. And at the end, all of those came to be. Mm. All of those, not one word passed by, but everything happened just the way he said it would. Yeah. We couldn't see that at the beginning of the journey. Yeah. It took faith and patience combined together during the journey to, uh, to realize those things. But everything he said was completely true and faithful and he can be trusted. Yeah, that he could be trusted. Yeah. And how are the kids today, as well as Joshua and your wife? Yes, they are doing amazing. Um, like you said, it has been challenging. Yeah. You know, anytime you um, bring in that many people into your family. Even one. Even one. But, you know, even four. One, <laughs> even one uh, is, is different. You know, yeah. it changes the dynamics. But um, everyone's doing really well. Um, they've all learned English. Mm. Um, they're all in school. They're doing really well. Um, they are learning to love Jesus mm. and uh, love going to church and, and worshiping together at home. Um, it's been really beautiful. Oh. And what have you learned about your, you know, I think about being a father now to, uh, to five kids. Has that changed the way that you father? It has. Um, you know, practically speaking, you know, just going from one to five, I mean, yeah. I've had to be very intentional 
about how I father uh, these, these children yeah. and making sure that I make time for each one. Yeah. Because a lot of things we do, of course, are as a family. So we have meals as a family and, and most other events as a family. And that's good, but kids need one-on-one -on -one time as well. Yeah. And so I've had to try to work to, to make that happen you know, in the schedule and make sure that I get some one-on-one -on -one time you know, with each of those kids. So important. Okay, well, thank you so much, Jeffrey, for joining us today. You're very welcome, my pleasure. The name of the book is We Believed, our 10-year journey pursuing God's promises to adopt for children. Um, I just wanna encourage you if you're watching today, I know many of you that watch have, are either going through adoption, I know I've heard from some of you, or have adopted kids, I hope that you've been encouraged by Jeffrey's story and his family's story, that God is faithful, that he does believe in you and he does have a promise for you. And it might be hard right now. I know adoption is not easy. It's emotional on both ends, but I'd love to encourage you to call our prayer lines. Our prayer partners would love to encourage you, pray with you and remind you that God sees you and knows you. The number is 1-866-273-4444. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Hey gang, we are adding new and powerful stories every single day. So if you haven't done it, hit subscribe and stay up to date with all of our latest content. Do it!